folks, fellows and partners in crime. Let me welcome you to another Finance Retalk session. Today I would like to talk about the future of banking and what role embedded finance will play in that future. We saw a massive impact on the traditional banking market through challenger banks like N26, Revolut, Chime and many others, but also non-banking providers like WeChat or M-Pesa had a tremendous impact onto that market. That shows that the traditional bankers don't have a dominance like they had before. It's melting like an ice cube in summertime. My question for you is, do you think that traditional banks can keep up with the pace? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments below. If you ask me, I think we will have a huge change or a tremendous change of institutions and which institutions we are using for our daily financial services. And embedded finance is definitely one of those game changers in that future. I will show you right now what embedded finance is and where we already met embedded finance in our day-to-day -day activities. But before we talk about the clash of changes, let's try to explain to you what embedded finance is. I found an easy explanation on the internet which describes embedded finance as a new model for fintech, but I don't think that is a useful explanation. If you ask me, I would describe embedded finance as a way to enable non-financial brands to integrate banking and payment services into their apps and ecosystem through the use of APIs. And I will also explain to you in a couple of minutes what APIs are. But I think embedded finance will define the next phase of fintech growth as services like payments, cash accounts, digital wallets, lending and insurance are natively offered by non-financial services firms in every industry. Instead of the traditional model where financial services have been offered as a distinctly separate but bundled service typically by traditional banks. So open banking is the buzzword we should definitely keep in mind. And if you don't know what open banking is, no worries. It's already on my agenda for one of the next videos. It's also about the usage of APIs. And if you ask yourself what APIs are, I would tell you that APIs are a piece of code that enables different systems to converse in a simple and machine readable way. Or if you would like to keep it more simple, APIs are enabled that different systems can talk, act and speak to each other in a kind of plug and play mode. Please find an overview about some well-known brands, their embedded finance offerings, the value they would like to create out of that, and also their banking partner, which stands behind those offerings. But there are multiple more scenarios where we can use embedded finance, for instance, for embedded payments, for embedded card payments, for embedded lending, embedded investments, and also embedded insurance. For instance, embedded insurance programs can eliminate the insurance agents or broker from the process of purchasing an insurance policy. You know, traditionally buying insurance was required for purchasing a car or a home. It was also an entirely separate part of the process to, be, to speed up things now and increase also the bottom lines here. Some companies have found ways to embed the action of applying for an insurance policy into the process of making a major purchase already. It's not always easy, especially when something is pretty new to the market. As we can see here, Uber is also an example, but there are also problems with an embedded finance. The path for the future isn't always smooth. While there are great opportunities in store for companies that embrace embedded finance, there are also some risks involved. Again, for example, Uber has made great use of embedded insurance and payment processing, but it stumbled with the introduction of its digital wallet. Uber Money. Uber Money was meant to give drivers a quick and easy way to access their payments from the ride sharing company. It also introduced a credit card that offered cashback rewards. Several months later, the company announced it was shifting focus away from the digital wallet, choosing instead to focus on core business function. Although Uber's shift in focus is a setback for embedded finance, it doesn't necessarily signal that. Others will fail in the same way or suggest that other companies wouldn't be open to trying something similar. The company's launch of a digital wallet was in a part affected by worldwide circumstances. The executives at Uber couldn't have predicted that a global pandemic would take place several months later 
causing them to re-evaluate re and shift directions. Google and Apple are doing also their homeworks and have understood the usage of embedded finance, but in my humble opinion, Amazon is definitely the king of the ring, the master of disaster, who understood first the benefits of embedded finance because it was also one of the first who has started to dive headfirst into the embedded finance space with offering following things like Amazon Pay where an e-wallet that allows consumers to check out with their Amazon account or Amazon Lending where a credit line is designed for merchants and their platforms in partnership with Goldman Sachs Marcus brand which is also pretty new and also the Amazon card a co-branded credit card for consumers in partnership with Synchrony Bank and Chase. And there is also many, many other things like insurances in some countries available. We know that we can pay currently in some stores, especially, I guess, one of the first are also in the UK, where you go in, shop in a grocery and just get out and you pay immediately by your Amazon account. So there are many, many great ways how Amazon will keep their clients on their platform or let's say in their ecosystem. And that's all about keeping the clients in your ecosystem, satisfying and serving all the needs those clients have. That's one of the reasons why I think that embedded finance will be a game changer and a huge threat for traditional banks. Because those non-financial brands have a great fundament, they have a great existing client base, which they can serve well with the usage of those partners in the fintech era, which enables them to offer financial services. And that is why traditional banks will have a huge challenge within the near future to keep up with the pace of those new service providers. Folks, hope the content was useful for you guys. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. So thank you for your attendance and have a great day. Take care, stay safe and healthy.